Welcome to the Revere Veterans Community Show. In conjunction with the Revere Veterans Service and the Revere Allied Veterans Council. Today we have a special guest. He's the Chief Operating Officer at Suffolk Downs. His name is Chip Tuttle. And Chip, let me say thank you for coming. Thank you. It's great and to be here, Morris. Thanks for pleasure. having me. My pleasure. And would you give us a little history on Suffolk Downs? Sure. Uh, Suffolk Downs started in 1935 when uh, Massachusetts authorized paramutual wagering. It took them about 60 days. They had a big crew and they, they built what at the time was a state-of-the-art racetrack, grandstand and clubhouse. Uh, racing really thrived uh, in the United States from the 30s through the 70s and the 80s. Uh, and Suffolk Downs has been a big part of the community for 78 years. So we're, uh, we've been a part of Revere and East Boston for a long time, and we're proud to, to call them our neighbors and host communities. Thank you, Chip. By the way, you've been working there since 1991. That's 22 years, I believe. Yeah, well, so I, I, uh, I started in December of 1991. The track had been closed for a couple years. It closed at the end of 89, was closed in 90 and 91. And a group from the North Shore, where I'm from, I'm from Salem, and a group uh, led by a guy named Jim Mosley from Hamilton reopened the track on January 1st, 1992. And so I started in December of 91. I worked there. Till 97, I left and started some, uh, did some other business uh, things on my own. And I came back to the track in 2007 when uh, Richard Fields, our current owner, uh, bought his interest in Suffolk Downs. And we, that's when we really started uh, our push for a, a world-class resort casino development at the track. So I've been there since 2007, mostly working on that. By the way, before... We go into the slides, sure. which you will be talking about. I would like to tell you, I took a little poll myself to see how the people feel about the casino. And I talked to 21 people at our senior center, and 17 were for it, four were against. And the four that were against it were only against it because of the traffic situation, and especially at Bell Circle and some of the others. Could you just, before we go into the slides, explain about the traffic, uh, what sure. we're going to do? Sure. Well, <coughs> that's, uh, we've heard that from a lot of people in... Uh, in East Boston and Revere on the North Shore, and it's a legitimate concern. If we're going to have a major development and, and attract visitors from around the region and around New England and around the, the, the world to come visit Suffolk Downs, we have to have a plan to make sure people can get there uh, conveniently and easily and that the people who use the local roadways can get to their homes and their jobs and, and to school to pick up their kids and things like that. So a, as part of th this proposal, uh, Morris, is a $1 billion uh, development. And, and a big part of that is our commitment to spend not state money, not federal money, but, but some of our own money, uh, $40 million, in fact, on local road and infrastructure right. improvements. And, and we have a plan for that that we've been working on since 2008. All the details of it are on our website at SuffolkDowns.com. And people can go and look uh, at that in detail. And if they have any questions, they can, they're welcome to, to shoot us an email or, or ask us those questions. But the, the main uh, could you pieces... Could the email? Uh, yeah, to send the sure. Email? Uh, they could send it uh, right to me at ctuttle at suffolkdowns.com. Okay. Uh, or to uh, our head of community relations, Christian Tija, at ctija, T-E-J-A, at suffolkdowns.com. And there's a way to, to click on the website as well and, and send us a note. But we, are the two main uh, areas that we're talking about for the road and infrastructure improvements are along 1A uh, from the little south of the property uh, to build a flyover up over Boardman Street, which is the main choke point on 1A south of our property. Right. And that would, uh, that would alleviate a lot of the existing traffic at Boardman Street. It would eliminate the state trooper who's there in the afternoon overriding the light cycle. Uh, it would give people easier access uh, back and forth. That really backs up in the morning with people heading south into Boston as well. And then uh, our second uh, major traffic improvement that we're proposing with the cities of Revere and Chelsea uh, is to, uh, to look at the missing ramp connections at Route 1 and 16 uh, to make it easier for people to take Route 16 and get on Route 1 North and uh, to try to take some of the traffic out of Bell Circle. Uh, I, I'm from Salem, as I said, and I've you know, been driving these roads for the last uh, 35 years or so. And we know that Bell Circle is an issue, so we're looking at ways to alleviate traffic from Bell Circle by improving the connections at Route 1 and Route 16. 
Right. By the way, <coughs> excuse me, they brought in some slides that sure. you would, if they can put the slides up and you can talk about the slides because the people that came to Suffolk Downs, like I said, the ones that sat up front yeah. could see the slides good. The ones that sat way in the back had a hard time visualizing because of the distance. But now they're going to put it on TV and everyone will be able to see it good on Channel 8. Okay. Well, th uh, yeah, no, thank you for the opportunity, Morris. And, and you're right. We've had a lot of community meetings. We've, we've shown our presentation. Uh, the, the picture you're looking at now is a rendering of the main hotel at the casino, and that's a Caesars uh, Resort at Suffolk Downs. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful hotel welcoming everybody to the property. It'd be the first thing you'd see coming in off Route 1A. Uh, it's about uh, seven or eight stories high with, with lots and lots of guest rooms uh, up top there and, and uh, suites at the top. Almost all of those will have a view of Revere Beach. We get people up and over the track and, and gives them a view of Revere Beach. You can see that hotel in the bottom left of this slide. That's a second hotel behind it. Uh, and that, the first hotel is about 300 rooms. The second hotel, 150 rooms. And that's a third-party developer that we're talking to as well. This view is uh, a view from the very top of Orient Heights. And uh, the old racetrack, you can see the racetrack there, of course. We're going to keep the racetrack if we're fortunate enough to earn a casino license. And we have the racetrack building uh, that we'd remodel, uh, mostly for uh, gaming and some reserved for racing. Uh, so we'd actually have two casinos, uh, one casino uh, floor in the, in, the, uh, in the existing grandstand building and one uh, that is between the hotel. You can see it there behind the trees, but between the hotel and the, uh, the grandstand building is a second casino. Uh, we're looking, uh, that this is a view of uh, an atrium that would be between the old construction and the new, the 78-year-old the grandstand that would be totally refurbished and, and the new casino. Uh, this is a view uh, from the Suffolk Downs MBTA station, and this gives you a nice perspective of, of what we're talking about developing. Again, this is uh, 450 hotel rooms, 15 or 16 different restaurants, uh, 25,000 square foot entertainment space. Uh, this view is from the Revere side of the property. That's the Suffolk Downs grandstand with, uh, with completely rebuilt with a new facade and a new entranceway. Uh, there's the, the uh, <laughs> I wish there were that many people at the track uh, <laughs> these days, but that's a beautiful view of the racetrack. We'll keep all the seats <coughs> um, that, that face the track so that people and, uh, and the entire clubhouse area would remain for racing as well. And then <coughs> this is something that we just introduced last week, and, and this is part of our commitment to have the greenest, most sustainably designed casino development in the United States. It's beautiful. This is a, a landscape, the beginnings of a landscape architecture plan from Sasaki and Associates that will restore some of the natural habitat and some of the natural ecology uh, to the site and, and uh, bring back some of what was there uh, years ago. And <coughs> this is, uh, that's Celine Dion over there uh, on, the, on the marquee. But uh, th that's uh, a reimagined view of what the entrance would look like coming in off Route 1A. And as you can see, it's a substantial change to the property. We're looking at uh, taking, right now we have uh, lots and lots of acres of asphalt and, and 6,300 surface parking spaces. And we're looking at restoring lots of green space so we'd have almost 40 acres or, or I think at least 40 acres of green space for public use uh, and our use uh, and pedestrian ways through the property. You can see some, some images here of what some of that might look like. And then uh, this is Winthrop Avenue. So wow. this is uh, looking east on Winthrop Avenue towards Domino's and towards the T-Station. And you can see that, that we're planning some substantial beautification along the Winthrop Avenue area side. Uh, that's another view, the same area, uh, just a little different perspective. And then I think we might have one more uh, view of, of some of the inspirations, uh, some of the places we've looked at uh, for some of the landscape design that we're, we're talking about. And then finally, uh, that's a view of the flyover that we're proposing to build uh, down at Boardman Street. 
And uh, again, for people who are interested specifically in the traffic, the road and infrastructure parts of the plan, that's all available at SuffolkDowns.com. That's beautiful. And a lot of work and a lot of money. <laughs> it is a lot of work. It is a lot of money. But, uh, you know, the, <clears throat> we certainly think it's worth it. And, and we'd love to be able to preserve the history of Suffolk Downs and one of Boston and Revere's great sporting landmarks. And, and more than anything else, you know, we've got lots of people that, that work at the track uh, who, who not only would we like to preserve their jobs, but we'd like to be able to help them develop careers in the gaming industry. And, and we're looking at, uh, if we're successful in earning the license, uh, having 4,000 people working at the facility. And that would make us one of the top 50 employers in all of Massachusetts. And, and this is an area that needs those jobs. And, and these aren't jobs, Morris, that you have to uh, have a college degree or you have to have an advanced uh, study. Um, these are really jobs for people who, who can work in the service industry. They, they, uh, the, our partners at Caesars say, uh, all you need really is a smile and a willingness to work with people. And uh, so more than anything else, we'd be looking forward to hiring any and, age limit? Yeah, no, there's no age limit. <laughs> I'll we, be there. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, well, and 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 we do. Uh, we are going to look to hire uh, to hire some veterans and returning veterans as well. So I know that's beautiful. Uh, Caesars has a commitment. Uh, one of the reasons we partnered with Caesars is they actually have the the best hiring practices for for veterans women uh, and minorities around the country and uh, that's part of we have a commitment to hire locally from Revere from East Boston from Chelsea from Lynn and to make sure that uh, the local community is well represented in the workforce here's a question that I didn't write down but maybe it's been asked by others sure with this so, uh, casino coming will that affect any of the businesses of Revere I would think it would be just the opposite because it would bring in a lot of people and they would have a chance to do it well, a couple of things on that. I mean, we're trying to, to do a development. You see from some of the pictures, and I, I, yep. I probably should have pointed out, a development where a lot of the restaurants and the activity is facing outward. And, and uh, there's some old stereotypes about casinos that I think have to do with Vegas, you know, the, where there's 20 of them on the strip. So everybody wanted to get a customer into their property and then, you know, make sure they stayed as long as possible. Um, this is a different type of development. And, it, and in addition to it be outward facing and, and people being able to come and enjoy the amenities without necessarily taking part in the gaming, um, we're really all about uh, partnership, collaboration, and community investment. And so we are right now developing partner programs, uh, and we've talked to the Revere Chamber of Commerce about how we do things to get some of our visitors uh, to local <coughs> Revere businesses and how we promote Revere businesses right. at our facility so that we're going to have uh, a welcome center or a visitor center, whatever you want to call it, that will be uh, digital, high-tech, um, and, and interactive that will help people learn about some of the attractions in the area. In, in addition, um, and you know, with lots more people working in the area, we think that's good for local businesses as well. But, it, but in addition, we think that our development can help spur other development in right. the city that's consistent with Mayor Rizzo's vision for uh, the redevelopment of the Revere Beach area and, and Wonderland and, and, and Broadway as well. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, hopefully a rising tide lifts all boats in this situation. Here's a question that was asked to me by a senior, which I did not write down, so you'll have to forgive me. Yeah. About security. They were worried that because they think every casino that has it brings in uh, people that are not the best, so <coughs> called to speak. Yeah. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen in Revere, and I believe Suffolk Downs is going to supply their own security. Or oh, I, I, well, a, a couple of things on that. Like uh, after, you know, the, the, the three things I hear and have heard the last five or six years talking about this are, are jobs, road and infrastructure, right. traffic improvements, and public safety. The, that's the one. And, and uh, <clears throat> the good thing about Massachusetts is the 39th state to have done this. 
And so it gives us the ability to look around at places where it's wor worked really well, and they've done the public safety part of it really well, and places where they haven't done it as well. And, and we hired in November of 2011, when the bill passed, uh, the legislation passed, uh, we hired Paul Evans, the former Boston police commissioner, uh, who had a 10-year run as Boston police commissioner, right. and then worked in Homeland Security uh, in the United Kingdom. And, and we hired Paul, and we, we sent Paul out to look at the most successful gaming operations. And he's been to Nevada, he's been to Pennsylvania, he's going to Ohio, he's been to Louisiana. Uh, he's looking at where they've done it well so that we have that information. Uh, a good part of that is, is communication with local law enforcement, working, making sure everybody knows what's happening. And, and another big part of that is reinvestment in the community so that we're taking uh, some funding and, and giving it back to the community in the form of in, in, uh, increased police presence and patrols and, and putting more, uh, more people on the street. And, and so that's, that's that a big part of it. That would be good for everybody. Yeah. Here's a question that was asked for me to ask you. Um, how will this benefit the city of Rivera, exactly what you're doing, even <coughs> though you said a little about it? If sure. you can elaborate just a little bit more on that. Well, <coughs> we, we think there, there are really four or five ways, it, it bene direct ways it benefits the city. As part of our development, we have to have a host community agreement with the city of Revere. And, and East Boston, too. Uh, and East Boston, yep, Boston and Revere. Right. And <coughs> that agreement will include, uh, it will include direct funding to the city from the development. Okay, so there's, there's a direct fee from the, the development to the city, which a city of Revere with a budget of about 140, 150 million a year, uh, our contribution to that I think would be, would be significant and it will help the city because uh, all the cities are in tough times right now with, with yeah. funding. Um, in addition, there are the job benefits, uh, hiring Revere residents and, and having more economic activity in right. Revere, uh, our, our ability to partner with local businesses, I want to give you something to think about here is that casinos spend about, a casino of the size we're proposing, this type of development, spends about $150 million a year on, on goods and services. And so we're trying to buy as much of that locally as possible. So there are opportunities for Revere businesses to be suppliers, uh, whether those are, are florists, they supply linen, they supply building materials, uh, you know, they, they're food or beverage suppliers. You think of, of a facility of this size attracting thousands of visitors a day and all the, the supplies that are need, uh, needed for it, uh, car service and limousine service and things like that. So uh, we're looking for opportunities to work with Revere businesses on that. So that there's, there's funding, there's jobs, there's, there's partnership opportunities for Revere business. And a, as I mentioned earlier, we think there can be ancillary economic development in the city as a result of this. Another thing I'd like to ask you, Mr. Tuttle, is I live behind on Standish Road, which is right across from Suffolk Downs, yeah. where Shores used to be. I have a creek that goes there. It's called Sales Creek which also goes through your land. Yes. And I read an article, I believe it was in the Revere Advocate. Yeah. Right here. Right here on the Revere Advocate that you were going to do some cleaning up on that waterway too? Uh, or did I misread that? <coughs> well, no, you, I, I think you got it right. We, we have been working uh, to, to, with the EPA for the last five years uh, on improving our wastewater and stormwater uh, runoff from the right. track. Um, it's, an itch, it's, it's a little bit inch, and I don't want to get too bogged down, uh, but we have over a thousand horses that live in Revere. And uh, when we have a thousand horses at the, at the racetrack, we got to be careful uh, that horses doing what horses do naturally, just lift their tails, that we're <laughs> doing a good job cleaning up after them. I got to tell, so, yeah. tell you, years ago, years ago, I would say about 1960 or 70, I used to go to Suffolk Downs to collect what the horses would lift up their tails <laughs> for and use it for fertilizer in my garden, and then it grew beautiful. Well, I'm, Can I'm, people still go in and get that today? Uh, well, we, we actually, believe it or not, uh, we, we, we pay a lot of money to have a very sophisticated system to dispose of it. So we, we pay for it coming in and we pay for it going cool. out. But uh, we just spent uh, $3.5 million on a new stormwater drainage system wow. for the barn area in Revere to make sure that we're complying with all the EPA standards.
terrific. <laughs> and, uh, but before we continue, I would like to say something about myself. I'm a senior at the Revere Senior Center. And you did a couple of things for us. You made a nice Mother's Day party for the mothers of the Revere and Valentine's Day. So on behalf of the seniors, on behalf of myself, I want to thank you for the good things you do for us. Well, as seniors. No, I, uh, thank you, Morris. I, we appreciate that. And I can't take too much credit for that because the, the track has been here for a long time and, and Revere has been its host community for a long time. And, and I think for years and years, uh, and Bob O'Malley, who was the chief operating officer at the track before me, uh, we, we try to do what we can in the local community. And it, it's not a lot because the, the track hasn't really uh, uh, <coughs> been a booming business for the last 10 years or so. Uh, but we do try to do what we can uh, for our neighbors in East Boston and Revere. So thank you. That's good. Now I got to ask you this question that was asked to me by a senior from my senior center. He likes the Massachusetts handicap. It hasn't been around for quite a while. Yeah. Is it eventually going to be coming back, or maybe you could let us know on that? Yeah, so uh, if we're successful with gaming development, we'd like to bring back the Massachusetts handicap or more big races like that. Um, and, and we have to look at the calendar and what fits. And, and uh, that was a big purse. It was a half a million dollars for one wow. race. And uh, as we worked with the local horsemen who were, were trying to make ends meet and get through hard times, we just figured that money was better spent on the day-to-day -day purses. Uh, but there are a lot of racing fans in New England who see the big horses, the big jockeys and trainers, uh, the big stables in New York and Florida and Kentucky. And it's great when they come here. And uh, we'd like to get back to those, uh, those days when we can have the types of races that attract those types of stables. And, and part of our commitment to gaming development uh, is to enhance the racing, to make sure the racing gets better, that we, uh, we focus some resources on the racetrack and the barn area and higher purses. In fact, the legislation uh, takes a percentage of gaming revenue and sets it aside for, for purse development so that we can try to attract some better stables and better horses and, and have the current people who have stuck by us and raced here for years and years do a little better themselves. By the way, one of the seniors told me that he also went to St. John's Prep. I believe you went there, and you went to Fairfield University. Ah, uh, geez, I, I did, I did. Could it was, you speak uh, about uh, that? You don't have to tell him how many years yeah. ago. No, it was a while ago. I, I'm uh, very proud to say I graduated from St. John's Prep up in Danvers. I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm from Salem, and I have, I have three children uh, at my home in Salem with uh, my lovely wife, Leslie, and... Uh, our, my, our youngest, our son William, has been accepted and is going to St. John's Prep uh, next year. So he'll be there. And even though uh, they remembered me from when I was there, they still let him in. So I guess that's a good sign. I know. And you live in Salem, Massachusetts, and you say you commute. How do you find the traffic coming down from where you're coming down? You know, <coughs> it's, it's, uh, it's not too, it depends on when you come, Morris, right? You know, if, you, if, you're, if you're during rush hour, 7 to 8.30 in the morning, it can be a little bit slow getting, and, and depends where you go, right? You, I can come up the beach, I can come up 1A, I can come right. up 107, I can come Route 1. I know all the shortcuts by now. But, but the, the beauty of uh, casino traffic, and gaming traffic, is it's, it doesn't coincide with the rush hour. Uh, morning rush hour is when the least number of people are coming into a, a gaming facility. Right. So where we're going to have the most impacts on local traffic is in afternoon rush hour, uh, evenings, Thursday and Friday. So we've designed all of our traffic programs to address the, the Thursday and Friday evening peak times. You know, I noticed what the city of Revere did. When you go down Whitford Avenue to the highway, before you go into the bridge and get out to the highway, the traffic used to be backed up way back. Yeah. What they did is they made the light last a little longer. Instead yeah. of having it like, let's say, for 10 seconds, it's now 20 seconds. And that cleared up a lot of traffic. And like the traffic coming down yeah. North Shore Road where the people make the turn onto the highway to get yep. into stuff like that, they could extend the light a little, have the traffic or put what they put, uh, I, I don't know what you call them, they put them onto the roadway so if there was a vehicle there, the light doesn't change right away. They have a name for that, but sure I, the the sensors so that the they know when, is the way when I was the right. For, right. <clears throat> so one of the things we asked our traffic consultants to do 
um, was not only, I, I mentioned earlier, the two major areas that we're focusing on, which are, are Boardman Street and 1A and Route 1 and 16. But we've looked at uh, Winthrop Avenue near the Beachmont T Station, and we've looked at North Shore Road and our entrance, and, and that's a DCR road. Uh, and so we're talking to both Mass DOT and DCR about road improvements. Uh, we looked at Harris Street uh, and that intersection at Harris Street. And the city, uh, Mayor Rizzo and, and Frank Stringy, the city planner, asked us to look at some safety improvements at some other intersections. So I anticipate that will be part of our commitment to the city as well. We'll, we'll not only be to, to look at 1 and 16, but to commit to do some uh, improvements on other roadways to make sure that the traffic moves a little more smoothly. Before we wrap it up, i got two more little questions. Sure. What's going to be done where Shores used to be, real quick? Yeah. And what's going to be done with the Wonderland dog track used to be? I understand you, Suffolk Downs owns that property, too? Yeah, so uh, on Shaw's, uh, <coughs> I, I, I know as much as the next guy. Uh, okay. You know, you hear that, that it's under agreement and that there may be uh, a development there. I know that there are some people who are looking at it for a hotel. I don't know where that project stands. Uh, for Wonderland, uh, yeah, part of the Suffolk Downs ownership group now owns Wonderland, and, and that was part of our, uh, we, we, we partnered with Charlie Sarkis and, and the Wonderland folks years ago uh, to make sure we weren't competing uh, for rival gaming developments. Uh, <clears throat> we have told the mayor and his economic development head, John Festa, that we want to master plan Wonderland with them. We want to do something that fits with, with the They were ongoing. talking about a soccer stadium? Yeah. I mean, a soccer team, not a soccer team. Right. Yeah, no, we, we, we actually have talked to the city about, uh, about that idea and several others. So, I mean, we're going to do some kind of development at Wonderland, but we're in the planning and discussion processes with the city on, on what would be the best fit. Okay, before we wrap it up, Chip, I'm going to give you exactly two minutes. Say anything you want, and then I'll do the closing thing. Okay, well, uh, thank you, Morris. I, I appreciate you having me on. And it's I appreciate my pleasure, and it's the people yeah. of Revere. They will well, appreciate and, it just as much. And the, the people of Revere have been uh, good hosts and neighbors to Suffolk Downs for a long time. More than anything else, I mean, we've been at this project for a long time now. Uh, it took us a couple years to get the legislation passed, and, and now the Massachusetts Gaming Commission is up and running. Uh, very quickly, I think, uh, and Mayor Rizzo was, was quoted uh, recently as saying uh, that we're, we're well down the road in our discussions on a host community agreement. So <clears throat> we think there's a lot of benefits for Revere Definitely. in that, uh, including those jobs that I talked about. And, and when I say that... And money coming into the city. Uh, exactly. And, and when I say that this is an area that... that could use, uh, use the jobs. That's true not just of Revere, but it's Revere, East Boston, Chelsea, uh, Malden, Saugus, Lynn, my hometown of Salem. Right. So uh, I'd, like to be, uh, come, I'd like to come back uh, uh, in the future and be able to tell you about a big job fair we're having at Suffolk Downs. We'd love so. to have you come back, Chip. Yeah. And by the way, I want to thank you for your time for coming up here. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. I want to say God bless you and the people of Revere. Well, thank God you. bless our trip, troops, and God bless the United States of America. And thank you out there for listening, folks. And again, Chip, thank you for coming. Morris, it's my pleasure.